What's going on, all my gamers out there? It's that X Meter and Beast, that Angin Beast, there. And today I'm bringing you guys some more of that Crisis 3 multiplayer beta gameplay. Now, you guys are watching some Crash Site gameplay, and I'm using the Scar with the Red Dot Site in the foreground. Now, in this video, guys, I'm going to be giving you my impression slash review of the Crisis 3 beta, and just let you guys know if you should be looking forward to Crisis 3 when it comes out or just take a pass on it now obviously i can't tell you guys what to do and tell you well if you should like buy it or not because you obviously have your own interests but hopefully you do keep some of my um you know my words of wisdom in mind when you do go out and purchase this game now guys let's get right into it now as far as crisis 3 is concerned the best way to put it like, if i wanted to make this review short is that if you like Crisis 2, then you're going to like Crisis 3. But if you didn't like Crisis 2, you're not going to like Crisis 3. Because the company went with the, if it's not broke, don't fix it type of deal. Meaning that this game feels just like Crisis 2, pretty much, guys. Uh, some people have honestly said this feels like a carbon copy of Crisis 2. Now, what they did pretty much is they went with the same idea, the same formula as Crisis 2. But they just improved on a little bit of things. For instance, sprinting doesn't seem to waste your suit energy now. Now, if you play Crisis 2's multiplayer, you would know that in Crisis multiplayer in general, a lot of it has to do with your nano suits and when you can use its abilities and how you use them. Well, it will suck when you wanted to use your armor against an enemy, but you couldn't because you took or you use, I should say, almost all your suit's energy just by sprinting to your destination. So they decided to get rid of that. Now your sprinting does not waste your suit energy at all, which I think is a big improvement versus, you know, how Crisis 2 used to be. Now, also, instead of the original three tiers of killstreaks, you now have four and more killstreaks. So not only do you have four tiers now, you also have a more variety in killstreaks. Now, the killstreaks in this game, you cannot pick them. They're pretty much map-based, right? There's some maps where you can earn, like, a gunship, which is kind of like a attack helicopter from Call of Duty, if I had to compare it to something, like a attack helicopter payload, some, somewhere along those lines. In some other maps, you may have a choice of an EMP, which will mess with your enemy's nano suits. And in certain maps, you can earn certain weaponry. Now, weaponry seems to be available in all the maps. Like, you guys may have seen me use the Swarmer a few times, and I believe there's a type of flamethrower that's available for some maps but i could be wrong about that one but point is guys you do have a little bit more variety of kill streaks and you have an extra tier of kill streaks than you did with the previous game now as far as the gunplay is concerned in here guys the gunplay it's not like too crazy you won't you won't expect like crazy type of recoil or realistic type of recoil i should say like battlefield 3s or metal honor warfighters type of recoil but they pretty much became how you would expect the the first person shooters gunplay to behave nowadays now, as far as your weapons are concerned guys you actually have a decent amount of weapons to select i wouldn't say it's as crazy as other games like call of duties and battlefields but hey it's it's all right selection you have at least available to you in the beta seems like two assault rifles to maybe possibly even three a crossbow a smg a shotgun i believe an lmg but i could be wrong about the lmg part but Crisis' gun selection, as far as 2 and 3s, weren't really never big, but the guns feel different. I do appreciate that. I like when game developers actually make their guns feel different. Instead of, like, giving you a reskin gun, you're thinking it's a little bit better, but, hey, it's pretty much the same gun that you used before, so I do appreciate that. Also, they have alien weaponry separated throughout the map, or scattered throughout the map, I should actually say. The alien weapons are usually the more stronger ones, and it's kind of like Halo in a sense where... You may have a few starter weapons, but the rest of the weapons you have to find yourself. Well, in this game, it's actually crazy type of alien weaponry, so that's cool. If I had to compare this game to any games in the first-person shooter market right now, I would say that it feels like a mix between Call of Duty and Halo. Now, it feels like Halo in the sense where you have the armor, you can do the little crazy jumps, and you have the guns scattered throughout the map, so like all the guns that do like the most damage and stuff like that. But it feels like Call of Duty in ways that it's fast paced. You have prestige and available to you in the game, the creative class, and you also have the kill streaks. Like the three kills will get you a UAV and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that it, it feels exactly like those games, like it's just a copy of those games. But 
And if I had to compare it to some games out there in the market, it definitely would be those two. But anyways, let's get right into the negatives of this game. The thing that's bothering me, number one, is that the connections kind of suck. I suffered through a lot of host migrations, even games just, you know, shutting down because of the connection. The biggest thing about that, about the connection is that sometimes you have to put a whole clip into a guy and it's unnecessary. Sometimes you're shooting at people and hits aren't just registering in time. So the connection definitely does need to be fixed. I know some people are going to say, well, A and B is just a beta, cut it some slack. But well, guys, you got to think that the full game release is coming out in a few weeks. So this is more of like a demo if anything than it is a beta so hopefully they can get their act together this was a, pr a problem also in crisis too so hopefully they can get it together now the biggest thing that gets to me honestly is that it kind of feels like a carbon copy of crisis 2 now they did approve in some things but it kind of feels like crisis 2 a lot like i feel like i'm playing the same game and i know some people are going to say well call of duty does the same thing all the time and that's true but the thing is with this game is that with crisis 2 it was an alright game, but it wasn't a game that kept me in there. So, I mean, if you didn't like Crisis 2 that much yourself, this game is not going to do much to change your mind at all, which is not doing much to change my mind as well. So, when I say it's a game you should pass, I think you should definitely give it a rent first before I say pass. But me personally, I will probably end up getting this game myself when I can get my gaming PC and when I can catch it on a deal, like from Steam or something like that. But I wouldn't pay the full $60 for it. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, do leave a thumbs up. It always does help. And if you're a new viewer, do subscribe for some more A&B dopeness. Laters.